Hello, my name is Glenn Hall, and this is part 27 of the Mystery of the Beast. Today is May 28th, 2020. Today, after uh, what I'm going to teach, I'm going to post a video by a young woman by the name of Alexandra. She is a, uh, a young Christian that the Lord has really anointed to see some deep things in his word and has also anointed to understand many deep things concerning the world that we live in. Uh, very profound things. In fact, uh, I'm very impressed with her and very impressed with the things that she says. But I'm going to say some things now that will help you to understand these things a little better than what she presents. There's a few things she still does not understand, but none of us understand perfectly. And that's why we need to be very careful with respect to the way that we judge other Christians, especially when it comes to judgment concerning doctrine. We, we need to be very careful as we try to explain the Word of God to other people. And it's something that a person really should not do unless he or she feels called to share the Word of God. Each of us are called to know God for ourselves and to understand the Bible. He gives us the Bible so that all of us can read, and he promises that he will teach us all. But yet, the Bible does say that a teacher of the Word will be held to a stricter standard than one who does not teach the Word. This is not at all a criticism of Alexandra, because I think that she is being very diligent in what she is teaching. It's simply that there's a few things that she doesn't yet understand, but nothing that's going to knock her out of any kind of a proper standing with God. I've taught you in this series that Donald Trump is the eighth head of the beast of Revelation chapter 13. I still believe that he is, and what Alexandra believes is that Donald Trump and those that are aligned with him really represent the false prophet or the the beast that rises from the earth in chapter 13 of Revelation. That's incorrect, but there are a lot of a lot of people who are working with Donald Trump who are mouthpieces for the false prophet. Q is one of those and Alexandra rightly reveals a lot of things that Q says. I have said, and I still believe this, that I support Donald Trump. I support the work that he's doing in destroying the deep state and destroying the cabal and destroying what the Bible calls Babylon the Great. But Donald Trump does not show the signs of a true believer in Christ. I think that he wants to do what's right and he is doing a lot of things that are right. The people that are aligned with him, the patriots, whoever's behind Q, they believe that what they're doing is right. But the thing is, 
they are not leading people to the absolute truth of the Word of God. And that's the issue. They're not leading people to the absolute truth of the Word of God. I was going to take you through several scriptures today, beginning with Daniel chapter 7 and Revelation chapter 13, dealing with the revelation of the beasts that Daniel saw, which is a revelation of the beast that rises from the sea in Revelation chapter 13, and also the little horn. The little horn is the false prophet. Where we are now in history is the eighth head of the beast. God has put it into the heart of the eighth head of the beast, who is Donald Trump, to destroy Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great has done incredible evil for millennia in the world. All the blood of all the people ever slain on earth is attributed to Babylon the Great. And Revelation chapter 17 says that God puts it in the heart, into the heart of the head, of the eighth head of the beast, to destroy Babylon the Great. And yet, when we get to chapter 19, well, first, let me just show you in 17. The end of 17, And the angel said to me, The waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples and multitudes and nations and languages. And the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. That great city is Babylon the Great. Many cities of the earth are representations of Babylon the Great. New York, London, Jerusalem, and many, many more. Chapter 18 then destroys or shows the destruction of Babylon the Great. At the very end of chapter 18, we see, and in her, Babylon the Great, was found the blood of prophets and of Kodeshim and of all who have been slain on earth. The Kodeshim are the holy ones of God. After this, immediately after this, we have rejoicing in heaven. We have the marriage supper of the Lamb. We have the return of Christ on a white horse. And then he returns, Jesus returns, and then listen to this. This is chapter 19 of Revelation. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and with a loud voice he called to all the birds that fly directly overhead, Come, gather for the great supper of God, to eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all men, both free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies. Now this is the same one that we see at the end of Revelation 17, the one that God puts it in the heart of to destroy Babylon the Great. So John saw the beast and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army. Well, that's against Jesus. And in, in Revelation 17, it says the beast will war against the lamb. But look what happens. And the beast was captured, and with it, the false prophet, 
who in its presence had done the signs by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped its image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur, and the rest were slain by the sword that came from the mouth of him who was sitting on the horse, and all the birds were gorged with their flesh. This is symbolic language. Is there going to be a sword coming out of the mouth of Jesus? Is there going to be a literal literal sword that slays all the rest of the people that are with the beast and the false prophet? What is it that comes out of the mouth of the Lord? It's his word. Everyone, all the rest of the people are slain by the word of God, slain by the Spirit. This is talking about their salvation. This is talking about the destruction of their flesh, which is what happens when we believe the word, when we begin to walk according to the commandments of God. And that's exactly what the lake of fire is. The lake of fire is the application of, of the fire of God to a person's life. What is the fire of God? Jeremiah 23, is not my word like fire and like a hammer that breaks in pieces? See, the word of God, the word of God is the lake of fire. The application of the word of God is the lake of fire. When the eighth head of the beast destroys Babylon the Great. His work is done. He has brought down the enemy. And what did he do? How did God accomplish that? And this is one of the things that Alexandra doesn't understand. And I don't blame her. It took me 42 years to understand this. Satan's kingdom is divided. Satan's kingdom is divided. Alexandra is right in that these workers of light, as Q Q says, from dark to light, many people aligned with Q are people who have come out of Babylon, people who have walked away from the absolute evil that they see in Babylon the Great. And that's a good thing, and I support that. And that's why I support Donald Trump. Remember, Daniel supported and prayed for Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar was not a godly man. He was as much in Satan's kingdom as Donald Trump is in Satan's kingdom. But yet... He was the ruler that God raised up to judge and destroy Jerusalem. Daniel was called to be Nebuchadnezzar's servant and prophet. And Daniel prayed for and esteemed Nebuchadnezzar and wanted the best for Nebuchadnezzar. And that's exactly what I want for Donald Trump. I want to see Donald Trump come into the full fullness of the Holy Spirit and the fullness of salvation. And also all of those who are with him in the Q movement and the Patriot movement, in the where we go one, we go all movement. Because the reality is that all of these people are going to come into the kingdom of God when they receive the word of God, when they believe. And that's what the end of chapter 9 of Revelation is talking about. The time when the beast and the false prophet And all the armies and people who are with them are slain with the Holy Spirit. Receive the word of God. Now it is very true that there are many New Age teachers now who are publicly proclaiming that Trump has what they call a Christed spirit. That those working with Trump are white hats and that they are destroying the black hats. 
Okay, I don't. I do not believe that at this time, Trump has a Christed spirit. I don't think. I think that is something that can only be said of a true believer in Jesus Christ who has received the seed of the Holy Spirit, has been begotten of God. However, they do see correctly in that he is destroying the black hats and that there are a lot of people who want good who are working with him. And that's the important thing to see. These New Age teachers at this time are the ones who are really the false prophet for the Donald Trump regime. They're those who syncretize all religions. They're the ones who basically say you could be in any religion. You could be Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, and still come into this and be part of this movement. It's a, it's a great melding pot of religions. And so those in the New Age believe that because there is such the swelling of people who are awakening to the incredible darkness that has ruled the world, they believe that that's going to cause a great awakening that will bring a golden age to the earth. Well, no, that isn't what's going to do it. The golden age only comes when God establishes his kingdom through his Kodashim, those holy people that he resurrects, that he changes in the blink of an eye, at the time that he chooses to return, those people he will set into positions of power throughout the world, and they will be the ones who administer justice in the whole earth. So as you listen now to this video by Alexandra, it's not that we're moving from the first beast to the second beast, as she says. Remember, every beast, every head of the beast had his false prophet. Go back and listen to my previous videos. Every single beast system has had its false prophets. Every beast system has had its own religions and those who always propped up the satanic government. And literally, we have been ruled by satanic governments for millennia now. And false religions have been their mouthpieces. They have fooled the people. They look like a lamb, but they speak like a dragon because they do not speak the truth of Jesus Christ. They speak a perverted religion. So now as we're coming into the end, the very end of time, this new false prophet is this prophet of the new age, this syncretistic spirit. It will not lead you to Christ because it teaches you that you are God, that you are all in all. There is no absolute truth. Another thing I want to mention in this video, and this is important, and many of you are only watching my videos now because of the videos I've done on the flat earth. One of the ways that you can always identify a false teacher, a false prophet, someone in the new age movement is that, is that they believe in what's called the secret space program. They believe in extraterrestrials. They believe in time travel. They believe in getting from the Earth to other planets, other solar systems, in the blink of an eye through 
um, technology. They're deceived. The truth is that we live on a flat earth and that there are no extraterrestrials. There are no people from outer space and other galaxies coming to help us, to save us, to work with us, to fulfill us, to make us complete, to bring us into our godness. No, that is totally false. Satan masquerades as an angel of light. Those who work with him masquerade as angels of light. Therefore, these New Age teachers have been deceived. They do believe. They do believe that they're doing right. They do believe that they're walking in light, in truth, even in righteousness. But they have been deceived. And so... One of the things to look for is, do they talk about space travel, extraterrestrials, things like that? That's one clue. But you can tell from many other things too, because as I've said time and time again, to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them, no truth no true light in them. To the law and to the testimony. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Remember at the end of the book of Revelation, chapters 21 and 22, two times we see people standing outside of New Jerusalem, a place that we often call heaven. People outside who are still walking in sin. We all still sin and we're deceived if we say that we have no sin. There's only one way into the city and that's through the gate and that gate is Jesus Christ who died for your sins, who died for my sins. I can't be good enough to get in. I want to be perfect as he says I ought to be perfect. Someday I will be perfect when he glorifies my body of flesh, but not until then. And I will not be able to go into that city until I'm glorified, until I am perfect, just as he is perfect. Now, I want you to watch this video because there is a lot of profound truth here and I encourage you to watch her other videos as well. She goes by the handle Probably Alexandra and has her own channel with some very good videos to watch. I pray God will bless you and open your eyes to see his truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, America is closed for business. Hey guys, it's Alexandra, and here are my thoughts on what's going on. Let's get started. I will be heavily censoring myself to avoid things that youtube.com doesn't want me to say, so we're gonna refer to this as checkmate for the rest of the video. The reason I'm gonna call it that, and we'll get into it a little bit later, is because there are two different outcomes for this move, this card that was played. A worldwide pandemic of population control and death, or the complete collapse of world economies. Do I believe the mainstream narrative? Of course I do not. When has the media ever told the truth? They say, do not fear, do not panic, yet they remove any other topics of discussion and focus solely on fear and panic. Don't buy into the narrative no matter how repetitive it is. The more times you hear something, the more likely you are to accept it. Social media is also guilty of passing around fake narratives and has become like a virus in itself. So monitor what you take in, be very careful during this time. Don't add to any unnecessary fear or panic you might be feeling. I disagree with most of the theories spreading about what's going on right now, but I think it's important to remember that not everybody has the whole picture yet. We're all doing the best we can 
with the pieces that were given. So this video is just my piece. Here are my opinions. Also really sorry about the comments, but youtube.com is just going overboard with the censorship. And a lot of times comments are what get videos flagged just because they use certain words that the bots kind of look for. All right, so in the media, there's the narrative. And then there's the counter narrative. The counter narrative presented right after the official mainstream one is a carefully crafted piece of programming. Be extremely cautious about what you believe in the initial phase. These events are planned as are the most predictable reactions. Not just the narrative, but also the counter narrative is accounted for. The other day, I went to look up the song It's the End of the World as We Know It by R.E.M. and the comments were just as I suspected. Everyone feels the same way. Here we are in a Hegelian dialectic. The problem, what we'll call checkmate. The reaction, these people are sick. The solution, a worldwide economic reset. This virus is a cover story for much larger events that could never happen nor be explained otherwise. Now that's not to say there isn't something contagious going around, but not as uber dangerous as they're portraying. It's always a good idea to be clean and cautious and think about those more susceptible to any illness. Look, it's never a bad idea to be clean. Just don't let fear consume you. What I wanna talk about here is much bigger than biologics. To understand what's happening, you have to understand the players, the deep state in all countries, the patriots or the white hats in the militaries. But Alexandra, why are certain countries getting hit harder than others? That's easy, because there are more corrupt people in that country at the highest level. Italy, for example, Spain, Canada, they're still run by the deep state and must be cleaned out. Xi Ping is a white hat. The Communist Party of China are deep state and must be eliminated before the reset. You'll also notice states within the US that have more corrupt leadership are hit harder. For example, San Francisco is Pelosi's district. This is a roundup of the cabal. I'm sure you remember me talking about the transition from the first beast of Revelation to the second beast, the dark world order to the light world order. In scripture, Revelation 13.10 says, if any lead into captivity, he shall go into captivity. If any kill with the sword, he must be killed by the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. The cabal, the deep state, have ruled the world for centuries. They have enslaved humanity and used us for whatever they needed, food, money, fear, entertainment, but things are changing. Let's look at who and where is being hit the hardest, so to speak. The first person to get checkmate in the US was a man in Washington state and then at a nursing home where 19 people died. It's interesting to note that many billionaires live in King County, Washington, which now has over 420 confirmed cases. It's also worth noting that those billionaires live on Evergreen Point Road. I'll get back to why that's important in a moment, but yes, Evergreen is a common term used in Washington, but the fact that it had some of the first confirmed cases the media focused on isn't by coincidence, I don't think. They're sending a message. The first case in New York State was at Young Israel Synagogue in New Rochelle. Now, New Rochelle has been known to be a major hub for international sex trafficking, says the New York City Homeland Security Chief. Justin Trudeau is in self-isolation after his wife tests positive. Begonia Gomez, the wife of Spain's prime minister, tested positive. Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson test positive. Has anyone seen a barcode placed in this position on a door before? Do hospitals have these? Any door experts out there to help us deduce where Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson are? Hanks posted this typewriter in 2017. He's known for cryptic posts. Hitting the road with this Corona Zephyr. The king and queen of Norway are placed into quarantine. Joy Behar is taking time off the view. Red shoe wearer Bill Maher hosts his final show for now. Jake Tapper posted an evergreen health doctor tested positive but that's not the first he's mentioned, Evergreen. This tweet simply says, Evergreen. Anon saw it as a warning to HRC since it's her Secret Service code name. In March of 2019, the New York Times posted a simple recipe of a soup nutritionists use to quote, reset. However, they reposted the same story February 21st of 2020. The most interesting part is that the recipe is for Evergreen soup. Miami mayor tests positive. Uh, the MGM temporarily closing Las Vegas properties starting March 17. 
the Aria, the Bellagio, the Excalibur, the Luxor, the Mandalay Bay, MGM Grand, Mirage, New York, New York, Park MGM, and Vidara. The virus simply has a preference for people with eight-figure salaries. The former White House Intelligence Committee attorney who led the impeachment inquiries against President Trump has tested positive for Checkmate. Here is a list and a non-compiled of celebs and officials who have tested positive so far. Please pause to read these slides. Remember I said the Communist Party in China is deep state? Well, Chinese tycoon who criticized Xi's response to Checkmate has, uh, vanished. At least 13 Iranian regime figures are dead and 11 infected with Checkmate. Seven Italian priests have reportedly died of Checkmate. Was this a planned event that somehow got turned around on them? Yes and no. The event is what was played. There were two different outcomes. A playing card from the Illuminati, yes, censoring myself, had a card entitled this. The event played has been Checkmate, right? However, the Dark World Order and the Light World Order both have very different outcomes planned for the same event. Should the Dark World Order have won this round, I do believe it would be, well, nasty population. Getting Orange Man out of office and placing their messiah in his place and undoing the damage the Light World Order did to the Cabal and continuing down the dark path of fear and terror and dictatorship. Unfortunately for them, the Light World Order gained the upper hand and has turned this around into the fall of the pedocracy. This is the final card in the quote plan and the Cabal was not able to stop what they've been fearing since they lost in 2016. You guys know what this represents? Tell us, sir. Maybe it's the calm before the storm. What's the storm? Could be the calm, the calm before the storm. What storm did you find? You'll find out. This clip was from 2017. Celebrities were warning each other about it for those who understood what they were saying. Just a couple examples here. Avril Lavigne had a song called Head Above Water from 2018, with lyrics that say, I've got to keep the calm before the storm. Then in 2019, Taylor Swift has a line in a song called Miss Americana, which is about the 2016 election and basically how they never thought she would lose. And it says, and now the storm is coming. And then there's internet enigma, Poppy. A song on the album released January 10th of 2020 called Don't Go Outside has lyrics that are ominously fitting. Feel free to pause and read them all for yourself, but I'll just read a couple. Now is not the time to go outside. Lock the doors and find a place to hide. The TV says we're out of time. Suck the fear in through your eyes. Everyone is bland and blind. Don't go outside. There's a specific line I want to point out here. Amphibians are falling from the sky. Um, hey, roll call. How many of you guys know a song that uses the word amphibians? And in this context, all I can think of is, well, what I talk about in the cult of Keck. Now, we can't discuss this any further without looking at Q. If you still dismiss this phenomenon, I am sorry, but you need to examine what is going on in the Q movement. Did you know? You can report on a topic without supporting it? It is my responsibility to expose this for what it is. I have been accused of supporting Q because I reference Q posts. I reported on pie fence as well. Was I abusing children? No. Referencing something does not equal support. Come on, guys. If I did not report on the Q phenomenon and its worldwide support and the importance, I would be a gatekeeper. It would be disingenuous not to report on something affecting the entire world. To set the record straight, this, in my opinion, is the image of the beast. Anyone who supports Q supports the second beast of Revelation, which is the false prophet system of which Q is a part. I have been watching this develop since the first post on October 28th of 2017. Since then, it hasn't gone away, but it's proceeded to snowball into its own narrative. Yes, we are indeed living in a movie. Q has said, numerous times that you're watching a movie. Do you know what else the beast system brings in after gaining worship of the image? That's right, you guessed it, the mark and or the number of the beast. The reason I call Q a false prophet from the beginning is because they do indeed prophesy. There are entire websites devoted to Q proofs or fulfillments of what Q said would happen in the future that later came to pass. A prophet predicts the future. A false prophet predicts a false future. One of humans being the saviors of mankind. The light world order passing judgment on the dark world order. But 
Can Satan cast out Satan? Lucifer does not divide his own kingdom. That's why this division of light versus dark isn't a division at all. It's just the illusion of choice. Yes, the dark side is being revealed in the style of a controlled demolition. All those who selfishly harmed humanity for their own gain are being exposed by this light side, the one concerned on the surface with humanitarian selflessness. So naturally, people see the promised righting of wrongs, exposing of evil, and have fallen for the solution in the form of a false prophet, of the light side. This is because people have been conditioned into thinking that there is only one enemy who appears overtly evil, and anyone who opposes him is automatically good. This isn't a fight of good versus evil, it's bad versus evil. The good side is not as genuine as it presents itself. A friend of mine once said, It's no wonder Lucifer has created two systems to be at work in the world, one to be the darkness and one to fool people into thinking that they aren't siding with the darkness when they actually are. In this light side, there's no need for a savior because they are the heroes. We are the saviors. The light ridding the world of darkness, they see themselves as God. What's happening now all started with this Q post saying clean castle with a photo that looks like a chess move on January 22nd of 2020. According to a post on Aitken, quote, I believe that in this scenario, castling means to turn the tables on impeachment and bring democratic corruption to light and into the legal record, end quote. Then this one, prepare for the storm. What's happening is called a silent war which indicates few people will know what's really going on. Corona, from Checkmate, stay with me guys, <laughs> sorry about this. Corona means crown, and there were lots of stories regarding crowns at the beginning of this epidemic. Harry and Meghan stepped away from their roles as British royalty in what's called Megxit, a pun on Brexit. Megxit has also been called escaping the crown. Then this image of the surface of the quote sun was a thing on news stations and the sun has a corona, you guessed it. Then the Diamond Princess cruise ship was quarantined, which is an interesting message. Cruise ships are a known human trafficking enterprise. Since then, the cruise industry has only been hit harder. A favorite number of the occultists appeared everywhere, as if to warn others. I said, that's my mom died at 3.30 this morning. HRC tweeted, at least 32 million nurses, blah, 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 time's up is in this picture. Okay, notice the 32 number, but this is a coded message and it sounds like a warning to her fellow adrenosaurs that indeed, time is up. Consider the institutions that are being shut down. Disney, universities, sports, movie premieres, which indicate a hit in Hollywood and the movie industry as a whole, the South by Southwest festival, uh, live studio audiences, cruise ships, annual gatherings like the Chinese New Year and Easter, the Las Vegas Strip, all of the above are known to be human trafficking hotspots and or used for programming. The travel ban also reflects this. This is targeting the underground, the cabal I always talk about. No, that doesn't mean every place being shut down is for programming, just some of them are. The bigger reason is the Corporation of America is out of business. And we'll be back as something new. A new republic, perhaps. Or it will be reborn out of the ashes, as the occult love to say. Dark to light, black to white, lead to gold. Bad to evil. So why are they sick? Well, this is one theory. The adrenochrome produced in the Wuhan facility was, quote, infected with a special variant of the mass-released Checkmate variant. Those who took the tainted adrenochrome will be blood tested and proven in court of law that they were taking adrenochrome from the Wuhan lab. I explained what adrenochrome is in my video, Lucifer's Playground. Only 0.00041% of the population are famous, but they are at least 1% of all the reported cases. Now, either these celebs got tainted adrenochrome or they agreed to push this narrative by agreeing to a plea deal to be arrested, but their reputations stay intact. In the meantime, arrests are also being made. Saudi Arabia detains almost 300 public officials, that's government officials, in new corruption probes. CEOs of countless international companies are stepping down. There's an entire website dedicated to it. And the dark occultists are the ones being targeted. 
military bases are being used as locations for people who have possibly been checkmated, and their locations match with cities and states that have a large number of sealed indictments. This is worldwide economic punishment. You can't drain the swamp without ending the Fed. I believe this will eventually lead to the worldwide economic transition. The Dark World Order most likely did create a virus to infect the world and cause actual mass hysteria and death, but the Light World Order countered, neutralized the threat and have used this as a cover to arrest the elite. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Shut up! I know he's your friend, but I don't care. But what is this doing to humanity? Well, a perceived outside threat causes everyone to band together, to unify, to unite. You're gonna get arrested, and you're gonna get arrested, and you're gonna get arrested. Everybody's getting arrested! This event is entraining the masses to distract from what is truly going on. Pandemic, panic everywhere. Panic, which comes from the French panique, from modern Latin panicus, from Greek panikos, from the name of the god Pan, noted for causing terror. Ironically, there's a Saint Corona who is over illness. Anyway, these occultists know how human psychology works. No one cares about the forest fires or human trafficking for more than a few days, but as soon as your own health is threatened, you care and pay attention. It's a common war strategy. Scare the public with a threat. They will easily give up anything to avoid a worse outcome. Getting people off the streets and away from big events reduces the chance of any false flag retaliation by the cabal or activation of Delta slaves. A quote, reset of American life, as David Muir said on ABC's World News Tonight. It is the new normal in America, a reordering of American life. Mothers and fathers now working from home. And this has already caused people's routines to be completely destroyed. It takes around 20 days on average for people to assimilate to new patterns. But now people are working from home, they're stocking up, and their lives are generally disrupted. We're homebound. Everywhere. Around the world. Nothing is normal. Up is down. This is very much like mind control, and we are being put through a form of trauma. Don't fear, they say, as they play commercials inside a fear banner that doesn't go away. And shows like this have to go ahead and air. How the World Ends, Pandemic Pandemonium. It aired March 15th of 2020. It was presented as being new. However, this episode is from 2017. So it was pulled out of the grave to be shown to the homebound masses to, in fact, induce fear. Hey, you're all gonna die. Get it? We're gonna suffer. We're all gonna die. Don't buy into it. Fear comes from the fallen. The people of the world will be so beat down in fear, hopelessness, and uncertainty that a solution presented after this period of paranoia will seem to be from heaven itself. We will venture into a new era of peace and prosperity where disease and suffering will be a thing of the past. From dark to light. And until then, patriots, stay strong. Stay united. And remember, where we go one, we go all. So we've talked about the problem, the reaction, and now let's talk about the solution, the economic reset. Now this is their solution, but it's not a real solution at all. All it is, is a solution to the problem they caused. Now a lot of people are warning about an economic reset. I'm here to warn about what that economic reset represents, the mark of the beast. Okay, so from my point of view, it's possible that you're going to be given a chance to receive a lot of money in the form of prosperity funds or something similar to that effect. Any financial help that's being put out right now from the government, that's not, that's not at all what I'm talking about. I am talking about after this whole thing sweeps through like a storm, I'm talking about what's going to be the new system, what's coming next. That's what I'm warning you guys about. I can't tell you what the specifics will be because I don't know them yet but I do know that America will most likely be first, followed by the rest of the world. In a rare move, 
the Fed cut the interest rates to 0% on Sunday, March 15th, hoping to bolster the economy. But the next day, Monday, March 16th, the Dow closed down 3,000 points, or almost 13%. This is a three-month view of the Dow. All gains for the year have been lost. Deutsche Bank shares plummet to record levels, worse than 2008 crash. Between March 12 and 16, Deutsche Bank shares also plummeted more than 15%, so much so that the globalist story says it's time to write Deutsche Bank's obituary. If this bank falls, the rest of the world's banks will follow. According to Bloomberg.com, the Waltons transfer $48 billion of Walmart shares to a family trust to bolster their philanthropy. As I've said in previous videos, these family trusts are very important to what's coming. They are the funds that will be used for the prosperity funds that will be distributed worldwide after the swamp is drained. Q confirms these funds are gold-backed and will destroy the Fed. Why believe Q? Well, because they're the ones doing it. What's so wrong with gold? We were on a gold standard before Nixon took us off of it. Was the whole world on a gold standard? Did the whole world at one time experience an economic reset? No, friends. This has never happened before, and it will never happen again. The largest quarantine in the history of the world happened within these past few months. Think about that. We've never done something like this in the history of the world. This should not be a surprise to anyone who's read scripture. It's unfortunate so many don't understand this transition and have mistaken it for something good when our Father has warned us otherwise, not only about the second beast, but the occultists have painted the apocalypse as, well, basically what's happening now. So when the light world order sweeps in to save the day, it's easy to believe it's of God. But scripture tells us a different story. It says that the end of this age comes like a thief in the night. Matthew 24, 37 through 39 says, For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark, and then they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. I'm not a financial advisor or a prophet, Everyone needs to make their own decision on how to avoid taking the mark, or more accurately, the number of the beast, which I talk about in so many videos, especially at the end of An Inconvenient History, and how all this is tied together, in my opinion at least. I know it's gonna get hard, and when we have more details, I'll update with what my plan is going to be. For now, we don't have the specifics, so try to prepare yourself the best you can, whatever that looks like. Maybe buy some gift cards to grocery stores or gas stations. Get some cash out of the bank. The Federal Reserve notes may be accepted for a while until they get them all out of circulation, which will be a long time, I think. If you are able to be in a position to help other people that don't have as much or can't prepare that way, please think about them too. Prepare enough to share. Remember that the Light World Order believes that they are freeing humanity from slavery and truly doing the best thing possible by creating a new world. My characterization of the economic reset is that it's the last prophecy to be fulfilled before the second coming. If you want to understand it from a viewpoint of the people that think that this new world and the light world order is a good thing, then you can check out um, some something written by a light Luciferian called Sea Change. He wrote something called The Protocols of the Illuminated Sons of the Golden Dawn. and it outlines what's been going on. It gives his characterization of this economic reset and the fall of the pedocracy and all of those things that I talk about from a completely opposing viewpoint. I have the complete opposite viewpoint of sea change, but to understand why, where a lot of other people are coming from and why they don't see this as a bad thing, you can definitely check that out. Links are in the description. A lot of people are going to be thinking that this is a really good thing. And I think that it's important to note that anyone that thinks this is a great thing or like that Trump is from God, no, he's the light Luciferians or the light supremacists see him for what he is, that this is has nothing to do with, with, with the uh, Hebrew God. Let's put it that way. I think that's important no matter how godly this looks. It, the false prophet system literally is described as being a wolf in sheep's clothing. The future promised by the false prophet system is a false promise. Q writes, God wins. Well, which God? Brother men don't worship the God of the Bible. They worship the creation, Lucifer, the Ensof. 
There is no making the world great again when this wealth comes from the fallen. The ones who enslave you cannot save you. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The ramifications of this war are eternal. The test of materialism is upon us. I highly doubt that any of us will have a choice in the matter of having our debts forgiven, since the Fed holds the debt. And if there's no Fed, there's no debt. It's automatically gone. But this debt slave system is being destroyed. My characterization of the new worldwide system is what scripture has warned us about for generations. We may possibly have to apply for or accept these prosperity funds or somehow make the conscious opt-in effort to receive a staggering amount of wealth. Money backed by gold, precious stones and silver, sort of how it's outlined in the Saint Germain World Trust possibly used for humanitarian purposes or something like that. When that time comes, I'll update you guys with my thoughts on everything like I'm doing now. So what do we do? Well, we shouldn't be panicking, that's for sure. To be quite honest, we should be excited that we are the generation that gets to see our Messiah come back. Spend your time spiritually preparing while the rest of the world rearranges deck chairs on the Titanic. Yes, be smart. Act as you would for any natural disaster. You know, make sure you have medicine, pet food, enough food, that kind of thing. But don't fear, don't panic. This is the beginning of the reset, and no doubt things will be off kilter for quite some time. It's the end of the world as we know it. And you know what, guys? I feel fine. Hey, I just want to give a shout out and a special thank you to all of my subscribers who have donated so generously to me on Ko-fi. I just wanted to say a special thank you to you guys, but I want you to know that my content will always be free. I will never have commercials or ads or anything like that. Information should be free. But seriously, I cannot thank you guys for all of your support. It means, it means so much to me. All right, as always, thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.